Should your next bike be an e-bike? Whoa, no need to shout at the screen like that. I know some of you will be going, no, definitely not. Uh, but I know some of you are curious as well. So let's look at it. Why do I think you maybe should consider your next bike to be an e-bike? Let me start with a quick profile of myself. Hi, I'm Neil. If you've been watching GMBN for a while, you might know all this. But here goes, I'm 40 years old. I spent 15 years racing downhill, 10 years as a pro racing World Cups. Then I went on to race enduro before becoming a mountain bike coach and then a presenter here on GMBN. Okay, so there's some background on me. Let's say I've ridden lots of different bikes and have quite a lot of experience from over the years. We do get to ride loads of amazing bikes from our partner brands here at GMBN, but also I moonlight a bit over on our e-bike channel, EMBN, because I tried e-bikes and I love the variety. So I'll be looking into the pros and cons of e-bikes, because there are definitely cons, don't get me wrong, there's things that aren't so good about them. And the same with your normal bikes, acoustic bikes, mountain bikes, whatever you want to call them. So hopefully I can give you a bit of my insight so you can decide for yourself. Oh yeah, and don't get me wrong, I hated e-bikes a bit to begin with until I rode them. I even hated 29ers and now that's pretty much all I ride. So let's start with the pros of an e-bike when you compare it to a normal bike. But of course you've got a battery and power so you can ride uphill faster. And for people like me, you might have a busy family and work life where you don't find as much time to go and ride your bike. It simply means more downhills for me. If I've got an hour and a half, two hours to ride, I can get way more meters of climbing and therefore more descending. So I use these as my kind of enduro downhill bike, whatever, where I'm just trying to bomb out as many downhill runs as I can. And with that extra power, I can do that as quickly as possible. Obviously for some people that doesn't matter. It also means for people that maybe don't have the fitness that they were quite like, or even that they used to have, or maybe even a disability, that they can ride up some pretty serious climbs with this power. You'd be surprised how steep and how technical and how many meters of climbing you can do above what you may normally do on a normal bike. And also it means that a lot of different sort of speed and ability of rider can actually ride together. Even if maybe one of you is on an e-bike and the rest are super fit on normal bikes, you can all ride as a group and maybe that wasn't possible in the past. Extra power also means they're great for carrying lots of equipment. And I use mine particularly, you might see the little spacer up there, for going for mountain bike rides with my kids. I've got a seat that goes in the middle and you can, again, ride up some pretty serious hills and go for some proper rides. Whereas on a normal bike, the kids start weighing a lot quite quickly and it becomes really inhibitive. You don't want to go and do like a 15K rise. It's super tiring. I've also done a video on EMBN where I showed off kind of how capable you can make an e-mountain bike, kind of like an SUV, where you could use it to drop the kids off at nursery, stick panniers on it for carrying or shopping around, and then the weekend, take all that stuff off and go for a proper off-road ride. Don't make the mistake of just thinking that climbing with an e-bike is easier and faster. It can be just as challenging and a lot of fun because now you can really find the most technical of climbs. Steve on EMBN is great for this. He's got some really good trial skills. And obviously you see this in the EWSE. They got up some really, really technical stuff that you know, it's gonna be lung busting on a normal bike, if not impossible. So really challenge yourself to some climbing fun on an e-bike is a lot of fun. Right, some of the cons of an e-bike, and there definitely are some. I'm not saying you should go out and buy an e-bike for everybody, because some people it definitely doesn't suit them. So whilst you can ride up hills easier, you know, for some people that's a con. So they ride mountain bikes to get really fit. And yes, you can get fit on an e-bike. I've definitely done rides where if you ride in the lower power, you're getting a really good workout, your heart rates up. I've even done some of those downhill rides where you know my whole body's aching a bit like I've ridden a motocross bike afterwards. So you can get a really good workout. Having said that, I've never done a really big e-bike ride and woke up in the morning and had those same achy legs that you'd get on a big push bike ride. A big one is they are more expensive. So an entry level e-bike is more than an entry level uh, normal bike. 
but are they more expensive on their like-for-like -like naturally aspirated versions? So let's look at a brand, Canyon. Uh, their entry-level Spectral is £2,499, although that is an aluminium frame, but the cheapest Spectral on they do is a CF6, so carbon fibre 6, and that's 4,399. Obviously we're comparing apples to oranges a little bit because one's aluminium, one's carbon, but the entry level is more expensive. But if you look at two like for likes, there's the Spectral CF8 on, it's 5,599, and the CF8 uh, mountain bike, non-e bike, is 4,399. So about a thousand pound more for the same like for like bike, but one's the e-bike version. They're also more expensive to look after. You'd be surprised how fast you go through drivetrains. There are e-bike specific drivetrains with like heavier duty and heavier weight cassettes, but a lot of e-bikes still come with your normal mountain bike components and you'd be really surprised how quickly they stretch and eventually start slipping. Brake pads, again, because of the weight of these bikes, you'll go through those a lot quicker than a normal bike and probably tires as well. So it's not just purchasing the thing, you'll probably find that you have to spend more money looking after it as well. They're not that easy to transport. They're heavy, so if you're putting it in the back of your car, taking the wheels out and getting in, you know, for some people it might be too heavy depending on what bike you have. They're often too heavy for bike racks, so if you're putting it on the roof of your car, check the weight limit. Uh, some bikes in the past, I've had to get a rack where you take the front wheel off the bike and then you take the battery out of the bike and then it's just about on the limit. Uh, but even then, you're then driving along in all sorts of conditions that a battery on your bike is not the best solution. You might have to get a rear-mounted rack. If you live in a flat and you have to carry your bike up the stairs, then just that added weight does not make life easy. Uh, and don't get me started on hiker bike. If you ever come to a stile or you have to get up a steep hill, as much as the walk mode can help you out, it can be really hard work on an e-bike. Image dare I say it, uh, what people are going to think of you for riding an e-bike. Now, I know some people aren't bothered at all, they don't care what other people think, but you probably will be called a cheater eventually by somebody, so you might want to consider it, but I don't, to be honest. On a normal mountain bike, you can't run out of battery. On an e-bike, it is something that you do once and you never do it, well, you say that, I've done it loads of times. Run out of battery is an absolute killer. Depending on your bike, this is a Canyon Torque on, it's a big travel sort of free ride bike. It's not the lightest of bikes. And if you've got a pedal this up a hill without a battery, bad times. Right, a massive one, I think, is the rideability of an e-bike. It's, it's different. I've heard people say it's a different sport. I don't think it is at all. It's, it's a mountain bike, but it's heavier and it's got power to help you out. And it does change things like the climbing, like I've said. But they're heavier, don't get me wrong. And there are pros of that, for sure. I think, you know, you've got so much more grip. I think they're predictable. I actually think they're kind of, in some ways, easier to jump because you can't kind of get pinged wrong quite so easily. But the cons of that are, you know, it's a bigger, weightier thing. It's not as flickable. So for tight corners, you're going to have to muscle it around a lot more. When I ride an e-bike and then jump back on a normal bike and bomb down a hill, they feel so agile, like throwing it around in the air as well. Don't get it wrong, you can do it on an e-bike, but it's a different sort of uh, way you have to muscle the bike around. And for some people they like it, some people they don't. So by now you might have decided whether your next bike is gonna be an e-bike or not, or you might still be shouting at me, but there is another option. Light e-bikes then, are they the perfect middle ground? And actually, what are light e-bikes? Well, they're designed to ride much more like a normal bike with smooth support, less power and torque than regular e-bikes, and therefore they can run smaller batteries and keep the whole package lighter weight. At the moment, there really isn't much choice in lightweight e-bikes. The two that I've ridden are the Orbea Rise and the Specialized SL Canivo. But let's take a look at the numbers. The Orbea Rise comes with a 360 watt hour battery. Compare that to the 500 up to about 900 that you see on full power e-bikes. Also, let's compare the torque. The Specialized Levo SL has 35 newton meters. Compare that to the full power Levo, which has 90. However, word on the street is there's gonna be more of these lightweight e-bikes available on the market soon. What about the rideability of the SL? Well, 
I find it easier to ride than a full fat e-bike because really you can paddle it up over the speed limit much more easily where a normal e-bike as soon as you hit the limit that the motor won't assist you at it becomes a big heavy bike again you just don't get that feeling with the SL bikes. So that's it. Do you think your next bike will be an e-bike? But I'll definitely leave it up to you for what you think. I'm not saying you should definitely go out and get one. They have their pros and cons. And for me, if I'm gonna ride an e-bike, it's the SL that works really well for me. Let us know what you think of e-bikes down below and if you'd like to try one out.